Good morning. Please be seated. So if you were to look at the Rhoda for preaching this morning, you would notice that I am several inches too short to be standing at the pulpit right now. Um, John is sick this morning, so he sent me his notes, so let's see what we can do, right? This is, this is what we call a Holy Spirit moment. I'm reminded of the, uh, that old Negro spiritual about Daniel in the lion's den. Didn't my Lord deliver Daniel? Why not everybody? <laughs> so this is the last Sunday of um, Epiphany. It's the last Sunday of the season of light after Christmas. And we've been talking about light. And now we have the transfiguration, which is kind of the ultimate Jesus light story, the the kind of shining beacon, if you will, the clothes that are so bright that they couldn't be bleached that bright. And the interesting thing for me, there there are two things, really. Uh, One of them is that Elijah and Moses show up kind of inexplicably, and so I'd like to explore a little bit of why it's important that Elijah and Moses show up. And the second thing is that um, the immediate reaction of Peter is, wow, these three really great people are here. Um, Let's build monuments. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today. So we saw in the Old Testament lesson the story of Elijah being taken up. And Elisha, his student, his follower, um, repeatedly being being told that his master is about to leave him. And how is he going to react to that? So as we're heading into Lent, we can't help but look forward and see that Jesus is sort of a prophet like Elijah. And this is that moment where he's saying, We need to face Jerusalem. Your master is about to be taken from you. And what I notice is Elisha's steadfastness. Your your master is about to be taken with you, you know, and Elisha says, I'm going to stay with him until the end. And we, we look forward and we see what does Peter say when people say, hey, this is your master. He's about to be taken from you. He says, I don't know that guy. So there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a difference in the way those those two react. But there's this whole conflagration of light, fire, and we're supposed to see that Jesus is this kind of Elijah like figure. Jesus is also a Moses like figure. When Moses receives revelation from God after he comes down with the law, every time he goes into the tent a cloud appears, and you know that the presence of God is around because the cloud is there. And when Moses comes out, having been in the presence of God, his face shines so brightly that he has to cover it with a veil. And so again, we have this kind of transfiguration, this kind of, you might call precursor of Jesus, or you might call Jesus the postcursor. But Jesus is a prophet like Moses, and he's a prophet like Elijah, And so it makes sense that Elijah and Moses would show up at this really important point, saying, we're in this season of light. You can see the brightness of Jesus, but we are about to head into a season of darkness, a season of moving towards, turning our face towards Jerusalem and moving towards the cross. And that's important also. And it's important to know that God doesn't abandon us in the darkness, God is there. God is faithful. And we can see that when we look forward and we know in retrospect what what the end of Lent is. So the next thing is this crazy, this crazy thing that Peter says. He says his immediate reaction to seeing this wonderful news, and of course he doesn't know that Easter is coming, uh, he, it's been told to him that, that, you know, Jesus will rise after three days, or kind of in veiled language. But his immediate reaction to seeing these three 
great biblical figures, one of whom is still being revealed to him, is immediately to want to set up a monument. And what does God say to him? Or what does God say? What does a voice say? Does anybody, anybody want to? This is my son. Listen to him. Right? This is my son. Listen to him. Not, this is my son. Build something for him. Right? We have this tendency when we have our prophets not to want to listen to them, but to build them something. So a few years ago, a friend of mine was commenting on this very fact in, in a transfiguration sermon, and he was talking about the Martin Luther King Memorial that was going up in Washington, D.C., and how easy, how easy it is to build a monument to a man that says, I have a dream, than to continue to work to make his dream a reality. Because he said hard things that people did. He said hard things that even people in the civil rights movement didn't agree with. He was a pacifist, right? A complete pacifist. He was against the war in Vietnam, in, in Vietnam right? Well before, well before all, of the, um, all of the protests, he was saying this is wrong. So we have these monuments. And of course, the funny thing about the monuments that Peter's talking about is if you were to go to the Mount of the Transfiguration right now, you would see a house for Elijah, a house for Moses, and a house for Jesus. How easy it is to build a house than to follow the pathway of the cross through the darkness, trusting that on the end of that darkness, the sun will rise again. Right? Every time the sun goes down, every night, we know that after the night is over, the sun will rise again. That's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for that. And in the darkness, we need to still follow the cross. We still need to listen to our prophets because they tell us something about ourselves. They challenge us. They don't give us an easy picture. They say, feed the hungry, feed the poor, visit those in prison. And so my challenge for you, besides trying to avoid saying alleluia for the next 40 days, is to follow the cross. Don't just say Jesus was a lovely person and we should follow, you know, love your neighbor as yourself and follow that in the abstract. Love your neighbor as yourself and look and see how you can make that come to fruition. How can you do that? How can you sacrifice? How can you live the cross life? and follow Jesus. That, I think, is the message for today. And the people say, Amen.